I tell you what, I'm glad for the old revelation because it still saves, it still delivers, it still changes lives. And uh, the same message that was preached on the day of Pentecost by Peter there in Acts chapter 2 is still efficacious today. And there are many, me including, there are uh, proofs of that truth. We are so delighted that you stopped in today. Our desire is to provide you with scriptural teaching to bolster your personal walk with God. Trust you'll enjoy the selection. May you receive it with an open heart and a spirit of prayer. God bless you all. Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to another Bible study on this beautiful Sunday. We're so delighted that you've chosen to tune in with us today and to uh, receive the word of the Lord from us. And uh, it's always a joy and an honor to have you to be with us. Uh, I want to share something that, that uh, the Lord drew my attention to this week. And uh, it comes from the book of 1 Timothy. And the first chapter there between verses 3 through verses 10. Let me read that if you will allow me. Paul, of course, is sending this letter to Timothy. And it says this, As I besought thee to abide still in Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some have swerved, having turned aside into vain jangling, desire to be teachers, of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. I was listening to one of my own uh, teaching uh, videos a few days ago. It was a Bible study uh, that I had given back in. Uh, October of 2012, while I was pastoring there at the Grace Pentecostal Sanctuary in Savannah, Tennessee. Uh, it was a powerful message, and I must say uh, it was one I thoroughly enjoyed listening to again, and uh, a worthy listen, how bit I understand. Uh, there was no video on it, per se. It was uh, virtually just a, a CD that I put some pictures of me standing in a uh, pulpit uh, to make it a video, but uh, nevertheless, uh, a, a very worthy here. If you have not heard that Bible study uh, called "Thou Shall Not Lie," but in the study, I read of this verse of scripture in First Timothy one and eight. If, if but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, and when I heard that. Word Again, I was reminded that the fact that the Word of God is a living Word. It is alive. And uh, uh, I was impacted again by what a powerful truth this verse of Scripture is. With this in mind and this uh, check of the Holy Ghost on this verse, I want to share a few thoughts uh, this afternoon. According to the Evangelical Commentary, 
uh, the theme of the uh, book of 1 Timothy uh, is this, and let me read. False teachers are the main cause for the letter. Their teachings apparently involved incorrect assumptions about the law. Chapter 1, verses 7 through 11. Not allowing marriage and certain foods. Chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Paul's real concern is with the result of the false teachings. For example, it promotes mere theories over solid truth. It also leads to arrogance and greed, chapter 6, verses 4 through 10. Paul focuses on the fact that true Christianity is shown in lifestyles shaped by the gospel. So it is that Paul is dealing with, with some false teaching here. He's, uh, he's dealing with false teachings and uh, teachers and what the result of their end is and what results from it. The fact that it promotes theories over sound doctrine. The fact that it leads to arrogance and even to greed. Paul told Timothy that, uh, uh, that uh, on his way, uh, that when he went to Macedonia, he says, teach no other doctrine. Reminds me of what he also said to the church in Galatia in the 1 and 8 where it says, But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other doctrine. You know the rest of that verse. Let him be accursed. Uh, uh, again, Jude talked about this when he says, Contend for the faith w which was once delivered unto the saints. There's not two doctrines. There's not three doctrines. Not four. I know we live in a time when people want to say, Well, you can believe what you want and I can believe what I want. And we'll both be saved. That, that is such a, an errant concept that uh, the devil uh, belches out of the pits of hell. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There isn't a multiplicities of doctrines. And so Jude says, contend for that faith that was once delivered unto the saints. There is no other doctrine, sound doctrine, than that which we find in Scripture and of God. He, uh, Paul told Timothy, don't give attention to fables. For all they do is gender questions. They cause more questions than they give answers to. Uh, I'll never forget, I was uh, with some Christians one time, and, and uh, I won't tell you where, when, how, and what, but uh, one of them uh, said, uh, Have you heard about uh, Adam's first wife, Lilith? And uh, I, I was shocked. Now, this didn't happen 10 years ago. This happened uh, in the last couple years. And uh, I've been studying the Word of God all my life. I've been in the ministry for 30 plus, 35 or so years. I, I, I don't uh, can't keep count of it all. I've been around the church since I had my first diaper change, so to speak. And I had never heard about Adam uh, having a first wife before Eve and uh, I never heard anybody by the name of Lilith. And, and, and this is the kind of thing that you will find in the Christendom. It's, a, it's an ideology. I did a little research on it. Some think it, that it uh, is a, a demonic spirit and they have dealt with it. And it's very interesting. But one thing for sure is that the Bible doesn't state that Adam had a first wife by the name of Lilith. And uh, it, even if... If uh, uh, he, he did, even still, uh, why would you make an argument or doctrine out of it and try to establish some kind of concept on it? Because, according to verse number four here in Paul's uh, teaching of 1 Timothy chapter 1, it does not uh, stand up to the purpose of the Word of God. And that is, it does not provide edification. It does not Edify. It is nothing more than what Paul said was vain jangling and pseudo uh, teachings from pseudo teachers, if you will. Uh, again, I recall this happened uh, many other many years before uh, the other event, but this happened. Oh, I'll say in the last ten years, I was at a church and I just had come off the platform from preaching. 
And uh, I had made mention, I guess, to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which is the love chapter. And uh, this uh, so-called minister, or this evangelist came up to me and said, uh, uh, you, you do understand what you preached about. When Paul said the, uh, that, uh, uh, though I speak in the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, have not love. He said, you know what he's talking about? And he began to school me on the gifts of the Spirit. And I looked at him with a little bit of a dumbfounded look because I'd never heard such an atrocity or such mockery, if you will, of the Word of God before. Uh, and all he had was some fables and some jangling uh, that sounded interesting, but it certainly was not sound doctrine. We need to be careful about uh, what we hear. But the law is good. And here is what uh, struck me in, in listening to my own message a few days ago. He said, the law is good. Paul said, there's nothing wrong with the Old Testament law. It meets the requirements of edification. Look at Galatians chapter 2, uh, excuse me, Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. It says this, the law was our schoolmaster bringing us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. If there was no law, we couldn't have been taught that there's one Lord, one, that there's one God, that there's one baptism. If there was no law, we would not know the righteous demands of the eternal God. But in that there is law, we know what pleases Him, and it brings us to a life of faith. But Paul said in uh, 1 Timothy there, he says, We know that there's nothing wrong with the law, that the law is good if... And there is the big uh, contingency of this message. If, if, uh, I, I, uh, if, I heard a story years ago, I can't refrain from telling it, uh, uh, but I must. If a man use it lawfully, and here lies the problem that on the airwaves of this nation and worldwide, there are salesmen and saleswomen using God's law for personal gain. They're not using it for edification. They're not using it out of love. They're using it for personal gain. Here, buy, buy this, or here, uh, send me some money. The, the prosperity gospel, what a... What a fallacy and what a, uh, a ideology that belts out of the pits of hell. Perverse individuals using God's word for personal justification. People who are in sin and whose, whose hearts condemn them get into the Bible and try to wrestle the word of God to their own understand to their own destruction that's what second peter said in 316 they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction the question here is and and, and and i want you to understand this the question here is is not who can win the argument i work in an industry of uh of uh transportation and uh, I encounter contractors and deal with them uh, quite frequently in road construction and things of that nature. And uh, there are certain contractors that I have come to learn. They are masters of, uh, of arguing. They are argumentative. And all they can do is argue. They, they don't abide by the law. They don't abide by the, uh, the directives of the state law, but they wrestle this thing so that they can justify themselves and say, see, what I'm doing is okay when in fact it's not okay. And here we are, people doing the same thing with the Word of God, and the end thereof will be obviously their destruction. But the law is good if it is used lawfully. 
We must be masters of rightly dividing the Word of God. Rightly dividing the Word of God. Study uh, hermeneutics. Learn how to rightly divide the Word of God. I've got a Bible study here on uh, YouTube about hermeneutics. Go back and listen to it and, and pick up some hints. It's not all inclusive, obviously, but it will give you a head start on studying to show thyself approved unto God. But even in Jesus, day, there were those that uh, did not use the law lawfully. I'm reminded of the story that's found in John chapter 8 between verses 4 and 11 about the woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. They brought her to Jesus and said, uh, uh, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. The, the law says, see, they were using the law, that we are to stone her. That is Half the truth. The other part of the truth is the law said that they were both, the man and the woman, to be, uh, be stoned, those that were caught in adultery. But you see, they put a spin on it there because they didn't want to uh, lose a friend, a buddy, a pal. And they came to Jesus for the purpose, express purpose, and you read it in the context there, to test him, to try the Lord. Because if he said no, then they would say, that, oh, you're not abiding by, Mos by the Mosaic law. If he had said yes, then, of course, he would have uh, lost favor with the people and even become chargeable before the Roman Empire of causing someone to be slain. But Jesus was smarter than them. He said, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. And, of course, you know the rest of the story. In the book of Luke, chapter 13, between verses 10 and 17, we read about a woman that was uh, bowed over. Her body was uh, in contortions, bound by a demonic spirit. Jesus healed her, which was in itself was not a problem before the religious world of that day, but the Sanhedrin saw that he healed her on the Sabbath. And they threw up a a red flag and started moaning, groaning, and fussing and, and became indignant because J Jesus had healed somebody on the Sabbath. They said, you got six days to heal the sick and you're going to do it on the Sabbath? And Jesus said, uh, well, what about your oxen that would fall in the pit? Would you pull your oxen out of the pit on the Sabbath if it got stuck in a tar pit or in a mud pit? And of course, the truth of the matter is, yes, they would have. And Jesus said, how much more should we save and deliver a descendant of Abraham on the Sabbath? A third time you find it again in Mark chapter 2. The disciples were plucking corn or grain on the Sabbath. And Jesus looked at them. They, they wanted to use the law to condemn. They wanted to use the law to, to win an argument. And Jesus said, hey, that you might know that the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath and so they uh, were uh, defeated and the, the truth of God prevailed. Today there still exists a church world teaching fables and endless genealogies and these same have turned aside to embrace vain janglings. You can turn on your radio, switch on your TV Turn on your computer and, and log on to the internet and you're going to find an industry seeking to sustain itself by using eschatology or prophecy that they may gain a following and financial uh, benefit. Preachers seeking a following through trying to find the new thing, the new idea, the latest revelation, if you will. I tell you what... I'm glad for the old revelation because it still saves, it still delivers, it still changes lives. And uh, the same message that was preached on the day of Pentecost by Peter there in Acts chapter 2 is still efficacious today. And there are many, me including, there are uh, proofs of that truth. But there will never, all of these that preach the, the Word of God for personal gain and for personal profit. They will never meet the, the requirement of the law or the commandments of God. And I read here again in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. Now the end of the commandment 
is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of a faith unfeigned. When somebody begins to preach to you the word of God and begins to beat you over the head with the proverbial uh, black book Bible, that's not out of love. They're not trying to uh, build your faith. No, they are using the word of God incorrectly. We know that the law is good if it is used lawfully, but that is not a lawful usage of the Word of God. If somebody comes and tries to uh, uh, romance you with some kind of new doctrine, new ideology, or some uh, fable about Lilith, you need to push them aside and say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And that is nothing more than a fable. That is nothing more than endless genealogies. And furthermore, your motivation is not out of charity towards me, but out of selfishness and out of a desire for personal gain. Let me encourage you today. Let me say this, uh, that it is more noble for you and I to take the word of God to listen to it, and then go study to see if those things are true, than to be gullible and to receive them without first studying the Word of God. That's what was said of those in, uh, in Berea, that they received the Word with readiness of mind and searched the Scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Acts chapter 17 and verse number 11. So my message to you today is this. The law is good if it's used lawfully. But if it is not used for the purpose of, of uh, uh, charity out of a pure heart, of a good conscience and faith unfeigned, then it is of no purpose whatsoever. So I say to you today, receive the word of God. Be like Mary of old when she saw the angels, uh, you know, ministering and, and all the things that were said about the baby Jesus by the, uh, the shepherds and the wise men. The Bible says that she's pondered these things in her heart. She didn't, well, she wasn't faithless, but she just like the man of old, the Bible says, he said, Lord, I believe, but Help thou my unbelief. Search the scriptures. As a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. Learn how to rightly divide the word of God. Study uh, hermeneutics. It is a worthy, worthy study for the student of God's word. And finally, never fail to pray for divine understanding. Solomon, the wisest man in all the earth, he prayed for understanding, and God gave him understanding, as he will also give to you and I. Use God's commandments when you're preaching, teaching, and sharing the word of God to others. Use God's commandments as a tool of charity and love, and not as a tool of condemnation or judgment. And there's something you can think about and apply to your everyday life. Thank you today for being with us. I trust that you've received this word of God with, with uh, a desire to, to uh, test it and search the scriptures. And uh, while you're doing so, uh, don't forget to check out our website, our YouTube channel. We have a Facebook account, an Instagram account, podcast that my wife puts out every Wednesday. And of course, of late, we have been working with the uh, Ministry of South Africa called The Kids, Reverend uh, Andy Carpenter working on that. And um, we trust that you'll take a look at that website and uh, consider being a sponsor of, of that also. Email us if you have any thoughts, comments, or complaints. We're always ready to receive and to hear uh, what your thoughts might be. Click the like button, click the subscribe button. We we want to uh, get the word out. Share us with a friend. That would also be a wonderful thing as well. But until next time, as God allows us, 
We trust that the Lord would bless you and keep you and shine and watch over you. But until next time, until next Sunday, God bless. Bye-bye.